Hey, you ever wonder how in the world that other investor bought the property that you were making an offer on, like seemingly right out from underneath you? Or how they got it for so cheap? Well, stay tuned regularly and you'll know exactly what they're doing and saying so that you can improve your process and better serve your clients so you can close more deals. And in this video, we'll take a peek behind the curtain of a real life seller lead call. We'll expose the best kept secrets surrounding seller lead conversations as our experts at Real Estate Funnel Systems work one on one with both new and seasoned real estate investors across the country. We're going to be analyzing what's working and what we can improve upon. Hi, my name is Christian Weatherspoon. I'm the co-founder here at Real Estate Funnel Systems. And in this episode, my partner Eric B, who's conducted thousands of real estate seller appointments with a 33% close ratio, he's going to analyze a real life seller lead call with one of our clients. And if you find this video valuable, please like it with a big thumbs up, let YouTube know that. And if you're new to this channel and you want more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Well, let's get started. Um, Speaking of Eric. Taking the call from the side there of the is. blah, blah, blah. So what's the, sure. The Eric B system. I want to hear the start to finish today if we can. Yeah, yeah, we can do that for sure. Um, and, uh, but to, uh, to kind of keep going with that, that seller, yes, he, he is crazy and, uh, he has crazy ideas, which, which made it even more fun of a call. Um, and, uh, just like the way, the way Eric handled and rolled through that personality for what it is, uh, was just spot on. It was, it was Awesome, uh, to say the least. And and right when the the last two minutes of the phone call, we're going to go right into you know his personal craziness of his business entrepreneurial plans and things like this. And and we almost just said, ah, stop the call. You know, we got the meat and potato. But I, I was like, no, let's keep. Uh, I want to hear the rest of this call going forward. And uh, it was the the best part of the call was there. And so <laughs> uh, I really appreciated that. And and to to also know like that that's where the rapport really is set you know eric did a really good job of making his weirdness normal for that call and so whenever you can make anybody just feel invited in their unique version of themselves whatever that is right whether he wants to go scoop manure from all the racehorses to put hyper performance pot plants into business that's what he was doing Right, like the magical racehorse manure into the pot plants to make the pot industry go Whoa. crazy. Like it was just, oh man, the guy was going for it, right? And it was, and he had all the science, and he was going right in the northwest and all this stuff. And and but the point is, is like as off the wall and as crazy as this guy was, you could tell that he lit up about it. Like the minute he started talk, talking about it, it was as if he knew something that the rest of the world needed to know. And um, that was how important it was to him. His son was connected to that. This is a business venture that his son is involved in. And so the reason why I tell you all this is because Eric did what he needed to do. He kept that conversation normal. Yeah, cool, man. Oh, yeah, I don't know much about that. Or, you know, like he didn't like go into exaggeration land with him, but he went into just, oh, sounds great. That's cool. Wonderful. Sounds like that's important. Okay. And kept that guy engaged and normal. And so um, that kept the rapport really strong and allowed the deal and the conversation to continue. So uh, as opposed to kind of getting weirded out or, you know, being opinionated or not making that guy feel as comfortable as he was to share as much as he did, because that part was really, really good. And, and uh, just, I just can't say enough good things the way that was handled. It brought a lot of confidence to me and the way Eric, uh, his natural uh, ability and compass in this role was spot on, spot on. So, so even if you feel the person is full of horse crap, they have something valuable to say. Of course they do. We all do. Yes, sir. Especially when it's something about horse crap. You got all my ear, you know? And uh, so was really cool <clears throat> and the um the thing that you guys will, will hear in that call is that um there was this um mutually respected good cop bad cop so eric did a really good job 
of, um, you know, kind of like allowing, you know, that gentleman's truth to be in there, which was like, hey, that offer was low, right? We need the offer to be up here, okay? Eric never got offended by that, never said, oh, well, we or put a stake in the ground of like, hey, we're right, you're wrong, or when you're come to us or any, Eric allowed for this, this flexibility and allowed, he kind of stepped into the role of championing, hey, well, I'm going to go work with Joe to see if I can get that offer up. What can we do here? And da, 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 da. And it really brought some validity to that gentleman's point of view. And also said, didn't commit to three doors, you know, making a big adjustment, but allowed him to know that three doors as a company was listening, was there to problem solve, was there to listen, was there to try to make something work of it in a very genuine way. So uh, that was the result of the call. Um, again, the rapport, very high. The setup put Joe on a, on a very um, well-postured position for the next call. And um, yeah, just put three doors in a really good light. So um, that's my summary of the call. And, and a, a, you guys will, will get more of that. But that's what we want to have set up is that as Eric Ellsworth is your biggest advocate, period. When he's on the phone with, with whoever, just know he is your biggest advocate, right? He is doing the dance that, that is needed to do to put you in the best light possible and not committing to one thing or the other, but just keeping those doors open, right? And, and anytime that he can extract any more intel from those conversations, whether it's just a different angle of rapport he was able to open up or a different motivational factor that he was able to uncover, all of that is gold and then going to be delivered to, to you guys, right? So um, that is, that's really, really important. And I believe that, um, that Eric did a good job there. So uh, without, without continuing here, um, is there any other feedback that, um, that you want to add on, Jim? Or, or frankly, Eric, you know, if, if you want to speak to that. Nothing. We're good. Eric, I'd love to. Um, I know you didn't hear all of it, but we, we've been seeing in your praises here for a little bit, for a minute here. And um, is there anything you want to say about that call or, or um, how you're feeling about the, uh, the setter role and what you did? Um, certainly, sir, and apologies for my uh, my tardiness. Um, that was a fun call because I think we got that guy talking and him doing the math and kind of opening his eyes a little bit, which was the main purpose. He'd already said he'd pay a 6% percentage on an agent fee if needed. So we had that buffer, and I was trying to get him to do the numbers. Um, <laughs> he is definitely a unique individual. Yeah, I see Joe smiling because, <laughs> well, he is what he is. Uh, but I think things of that nature are going to roll over to calls moving forward. Uh, I just got a message from Dave Stelmacki about a gentleman who uh, is also a little out of left field um, that I'm going to have to follow up with, and it's going to be an interesting approach. Uh, he's a little paranoid, a little unique, I guess, for lack of better terms, but you have to deal with those personalities and you try to get them to, to think and maybe talk out loud, share. They might be telling you something that they don't realize they're telling you. And uh, it's taking advantage of those and being in constant contact about the follow-up. So even with these uh, phone consults, which I'm really excited about getting off the ground, it's going to be huge if they're not willing to sell now or whatever the case might be. But if we do a phone consult and establish and position ourselves to be the company that they go with and you talk to them on the phone and then I get the feedback from you on what my logical next step is, that's going to be huge. That's going to hold the traction to keep these deals in the pipeline and being there and present when they're actually ready to pull the trigger. So I'm really excited about this process. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll say also, uh, Eric uh, shot me a lead for a phone consult this week, and it's a really easy conversation to have after he's spoken with them, just to follow up with these folks, dig a little bit deeper on their situation, and really know when to get back in touch with them, uh, know when they're going to be ready to sell, 
uh, I think, yeah, I'm real excited about this. I think it's going to be a great, great so, way to hear. <laughs> so Chuck, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, let's go over phone consults with everybody because this is a newer thing. Uh, so, uh, uh, so what we're doing is uh, there's a criteria and then if, if Eric doesn't quite think like, okay, they're ready to, to make a decision to sell the property, but it's still something we really want to just continue a, building rapport and building a relationship, uh, he'll actually set a phone consult with, uh, with these people. So it saves you a trip out there, but we at least kind of continue them, moving them forward in the process a little bit. Uh, so uh, B, can you kind of fill in the gaps and kind of talk more on, on the phone consult? Yeah, so, so the, that phone consult is, it's designed to be that, that in between, like, is it really ready for an appointment or not? Is that, that in between motivation where it's, it's a little bit hard to tell, uh, or there needs to be um, a deeper level of an analysis because of the unique characteristics of a property or something like this, where those properties fit in that in between. It's just not obvious that you, we should go out to the appointment or not. That's where we want to utilize that phone console. And so that is where Eric will set up the expectation to have a phone console. That phone console then can go into that deeper level of discovery. And, um, you know, you can, as a uh, acquisition manager, you can have the comps open and you can kind of have that, that deeper discussion there and then hopefully push it over to an appointment. Right. And that's where you dis you describe to them the process of rough draft desktop analysis, final draft, going out to see the property where an offer is determined. Right. Rough draft, final draft. OK, is what a, a desktop analysis to a offer really looks like. So um, that's that's the uh, idea of a, a phone console. Any okay, questions so on that or. So has Eric, so he's explained this to me a couple of times. Have you guys heard of this rough draft or final draft and like the appraisal process and that verbiage that Eric has? Is, is, have we gone over this with y'all yet? Anybody? I, I don't remember it. We may have, but I don't remember. I don't remember it particularly. I think I've heard him kind of mention it, but I, I get the gist of what that means. I mean, that's it's doing your due diligence before you get out there, already have an idea of what you think the property, they have an opinion of the market value before you get there. And then once you put eyes on it, actually you can have a determination of what you really think it should be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So completely right. Brian. And so, um, but here's how I say this in a very, uh, in a very like consistent way or how I found to explain this and uh, people will fall into this logic and, and uh, this this goes into the play of when you get somebody that's just like no you you sent me a text or you called me give me your offer quit you know if you're real give me your damn offer like quit messing around with me that guy right we all dealt with that guy okay now when when i'm working with that personality right there um this i go heavy into the rough draft final draft concept that's fine sir i can give you an offer it's going to be a rough draft offer it's it has to be why because i haven't seen the property yet so i'm going to determine my offer based on this conversation with some some broad assumptions and I'm going to look at the comps and I'm going to come up with an offer range. But none of that is good. Everything that I tell you right here on, on a, without seeing the property, it's always going to be considered rough draft. For us to come to a final draft, we need to go walk the property, right? Now, I can get something. I don't mind uh, entering into contract on a rough draft basis. But know that it's all going to get verified before we close escrow. That's a true statement in any scenario, whether like I'm not shutting the door to getting a, a contract over the phone. It's like, hey, uh, that's fine. But guess what? This is sight unseen, right? So just be ready and prepared for if there's any surprises that we're gonna have to adjust this number. It's a rough draft. And if you're okay with that, we can move forward. If not, then let's do the final draft. That means that when can I get out to the property so that I can make you an offer there? It's the, just the concept of without seeing it and walking it, it can't be 100%. We always need to verify what we buy. Always. I like that. I like that, Eric, from the simple fact that 
typically when somebody was putting me in that position of like, well, what's your offer now? I would go the way of saying, well, hey, look, I can give you an all cash offer now, but but, but the being blind is probably be lower than your expectation. And you know. And I would say something like that because I'm, I'm trying to say, look, I, I'm not going to come with some full retail offer because that's not what this is. But I'm also not going to come with a low ball offer just to piss you off. I'm, I'm telling you, giving the expectation that it's going to be lower than what you think because I can't really verify what is good and what's not. And, and I can have you on the phone for an hour here interrogating you, or I could just come out and see the property. Yes. Okay. And, and, and we can refine that. But yes, you're exactly right. You know, that that is um, and now as opposed to like saying, well, I can make you an offer. Right. And it, but you're just not going to like it with its sight unseen. Why? Because I'm going to err on the side of conservative all the way through because I haven't verified anything. So when I err on the side of conservative all the way through, it just makes my offer exaggeratedly low. So in order for me to get my offer as high as possible, what does he want? To meet with you in person. He wants my offer to be what? High as, as high possible. as possible. Okay. So in order for me to get my, my offer as high as possible, me knowing what he wants, I've just connected the dots from what I'm saying to what he wants, his desire. I know that he wants my offer to be as high as possible, logically. So in order for me to get my offer as high as possible, I need to go see the property. That's how I can be as accurate and as aggressive as I can be. Right? So now I just aligned what he wants and what needs to happen. You guys with that or no? Okay. It's alignment. So... So Eric, uh, the the value add for us going through our like kind of appraisal process, can you uh, talk on that real quick? Your your dialogue on on why an appointment's valuable for us to go out. Yeah. So, um, a, a an appointment, I always see an appointment as the highest point of conversion. Okay. If you were to measure it all the way through, the appointment face to face contact and when you're at a property is the highest point of conversion so just recognizing that for what it is so i always if i can get to an appointment i'm going to try to get to an appointment it gives me the best chance to win right now um the 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 appraisal process and just ex describing to them the appraisal process and making sure that hey set the, setting the stage for the appraisal process in order for us to make you an offer, we will largely go through an appraisal process. We need to determine the, the current value and the future value, potential value of your, pro your particular asset or property. I'll either say property or asset, not house anymore, right? So of your particular asset, that's the most best thing to say is asset, right? So now, in order for us to do that, we go through in the appraisal process. We pull comps and we go uh, see the condition. So this is how an appraiser does it. This is exactly how we do it. And the outcome of walking a property after having driven the comps is that I can make an offer at that stage. The, the goal of this moment is accuracy. I'll state that. We do all of, we go through this process so we can be as accurate as possible. That's the goal here. Okay. That's the appraisal process. Now, by, by walking somebody through that very ABC description, that, that uh, separates us. Okay. Very few people are going to talk to them about any sort of an appraisal process. Very few people are going to talk to them about any sort of a process whatsoever. They'll, they'll just say, hey, this is what I can offer you. Most of the time, right? So by us taking that, just that ex, extra layer of explanation gives a lot of validity to what exactly we're doing. How many of you guys can see that, that to be true? Cool. One, two. Awesome.
Awesome. Jim, was that what you were referring to? Yeah, yeah. I just, I like it because like the headspace of like, hey, we're doing a valuable service regardless if they accept the offer or not. I mean, people pay good money for appraisals. You know, like like there's a value add there uh, for so, them to meet with us. So how could you, Jim, yeah. you brought up a really good point that I kind of left was building the value behind that, right? So you just you just brought that up. So um, the the value, how do you bring up the value of that? How do, how do you emphasize the value of that? So one way is by saying, this is how professionals do it, reminding them that this is a, what professionals do, um, reminding them that for the people that are very serious about um, moving forward in any direction of about selling, whether it's listing or um, considering a cash offer, I will spend the hour of my time, hour plus, you can say whatever duration of time, I will invest that amount of time into coming up and doing this level of work at no cost to you. Okay, this is a part of our process that we don't charge for and you get what out of it. Okay, so reminding them your time, this is what professionals do and we don't charge for it. And what do you get at the, at the conclusion of me meeting my clients at the property is that you'll get my offer packet. And in that offer packet, you're gonna get the information about me, our team, but you're also gonna get information about your, your property, the comps that we used to determine our opinion of value, a client net sheet that describes the three different ways that you can sell your property logically, and a purchase and sale agreement. If you guys want to move forward, that you you can. So that's the value of our appointment. No obligation to sign that contract, but if you wanted to, you can. If you liked what we came up with, you have all the opportunity to sign that contract on that spot. If you like what we come up with, I'm embedding something into their head. You're going to what? like what we come up with and if you, you feel know, empowered to sign the contract at that time you by all means will have that opportunity how do i want them to feel empowered i said it if you feel empowered at that time and confident you'll have the opportunity to sign the contract on the spot you know what I was just thinking, Eric, everything you just said, because I've been working with this initial phone call script, is at the point where you say, where we say, would you like to know how we work with our clients? Hmm. That's a great, uh, great point to insert exactly what you said over the past couple of minutes. Insert that and really, really build value in addition to explaining the options that we're going to present them with. Amen, Chuck. Now, here's the homework. This is where the work really begins for you guys. It's all great when I say it right off the, off the cuff, right? What, what you're hearing is just practice. That's what you're just hearing from me. It's not the same word. It's, I didn't read a script. It's, I, didn't, I didn't, you know, that's not, that's practice. Okay. So what, how do we all capitalize on and, and really gra grab those, those phrases and that phraseology that we like that just freaking makes it move forward? We write them down. So, so my challenge to you right now is, and we can, read, we can send this call out so you can, we can watch the recording, but this is what Clint, my client did to build that sales bits. In moments like this, he would say, I'm writing that down. I'm going to rewatch this and I'm going to write down what you just said in those two minutes that really resonated with me. And I'm going to write that down and I'm going to make that mine. Okay. And then I'm going to practice that because that resonated and I can see myself really having success with that. Sit. Okay. There's a bazillion different ways to skin the cat. There's no right or wrong down this channel. These are all examples of how to achieve what we want to here. So 
the, the point that I'm really trying to make here and emphasize is the work is when, when a phrasing like this resonates with you, write it down and practice it because it will serve you. And over time, you'll end up with the sheet just like Clint did that you guys have access to and hopefully start utilizing on some, some level to spark you. But man, that's it, right? Lead with value. Has anybody ever heard that? in sales just in general lead with value anybody yes thank you brian so for for raising your hand so like it's it's very very we subconsciously are are picking up the read whether we acknowledge it or not if there's value on the table if there's somebody's leading with value we are subconsciously registering that even if we're not like aware of it on their front side okay so because if they're leading with value we're like dude that's i i like man i'm i'm getting value out of that like i want more of that i'm already got some value out of it i want more that's an emotional state that we can create right so how do we create that value lead with value hey one of the reasons one of the many reasons why my clients love working with us working with our team you don't want to say working with me, <laughs> working with our team, working with us as a company is because we are dedicated to a leading with value with our clients. And the way we do that is by, by, for the clients that are very serious about making a decision, we do this. We do a full appraisal. We meet our clients. Okay, I'm back. We come back with a full, once I meet you, shake your hand. No such thing. At the end of this appointment, have a whole offer. And in that offer packet, you're going to have this and this and this. My clients live in the decision-making process. A lot of times, our Probably. clients can make a decision, feel um, confident enough to make the decision on that That's spot. not what you asked. You asked if you could do it. Jason, you're on mute. Okay. Did you guys... Did you guys pick up what I just said? Can you say that say that again, please? Okay. One of the one of the many, you can say however you want to, right? How cheesy do you want to get? Right. But one of the one of the many reasons why our clients love working with us is because we as a team were dedicated to leading with value. What does that mean for you for our clients? Is that we do a full analysis whenever we're making an offer. We don't take any shortcuts. We do a full analysis, okay? It starts on the desktop. That's where we get our rough draft. But we quickly try to go to the final draft stage for our clients that are very serious. You can tell me how serious you are if you want on a scale of one to 10, but if you are very serious, then the next stage is to go out to your property and finalize what we determine from a desktop. And at that time, we can... We'll, we will be ready to uh, make you an offer. And the reason why is because I'm going to come up with, I'm going to establish my offer packet. And in that offer packet, you get, okay, and I just roll down. You get to know about us and our team. You get the subject property information. You get to the comps that we use to determine our opinion of value. I never say what I, it's always my opinion. We are all entitled to our own opinions. Therefore, my opinion is there. It's my opinion. I just, I'm showing you how I develop my opinion. And then based on that, I can move forward with an offer. But regardless of whether you accept our offer or decide not to, I'm going to leave you with that, that packet. So you have a very good understanding of where we're coming from. Some people put more value on this type of a, of a offer packet than even an appraisal. You could say things like this. You're also uh, covering a lot of the uh, upfront agreement or the upfront contract, whatever you want to call it. You're, you're really killing two birds with one stone, setting yourself apart, leading with value and letting them know how everything works. Okay. I often like to share that, you know, um, at bare minimum, if, you know, this doesn't work out between this, you now, you know, you now know your options. I like to use the word options. So you, you now know, know what your options are because yes. again 
even if it doesn't, because the, what that does, my goal is for that to resonate in their head. So somebody else comes along and shows them, they're like, well, this guy already kind of gave me an idea of what, what this should be. And so now I know what, what I can do. So hopefully that'll give me a call back. So that's kind of why I say that. How about you? But I like options when I'm making a big decision. How about you? What did I just do? By saying that the way I did, I put it on. Well, yeah, I like this. Yeah, me too. I like, I like options. Cool. Most of our clients do. That's why we do. That's why this is how we separate ourselves. You can say that. I use this as a separator. Most of anybody else you're going to talk to does do not take the time to do this. Do not approach it with this transparency. Do not do this. Do not, do not, do not, do not. Right. You can say all them, me, them, me. I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to any professors, but most of them don't do. Okay. Them, me. Okay. And that's really powerful if you get them to tell you prior to that convert that moment. So why, what, what have you done to sell your house? Just out of curiosity, what have you guys done anything to sell your house to be talked to a real estate agent, looked at Zillow, talked to any other investors? Like, what have you guys done? Okay. And so why didn't you move forward with any one of those options? The answer there gives me, then I just use that against them right around the corner. Oh, well, we don't like real estate agents or, you know, if we could avoid putting it on the open market and doing all that stuff, I mean, we would really like to, of course we, we will, if we have to, but it, we're considering options. Perfect. Most of my clients are people just like you that are, then repeat everything they just said are in the scenario where they're considering, but most of the time they don't like this. They want to avoid all of the pitfalls of this and they want this. Does that sound like, it sounds like you, right? Oh yeah, that's, you just heard exactly what I said. Yeah, I just repeated what you just said, right? That's rapport. That's letting them know that you're just like all of my clients. In fact, we're, we're built to work with people like you. Our whole business model revolves around working with people like you. Is that true? Yes or no? Y yes. Thank you, David. Do yes. Yes. I'm trying yeah. to get on mute. True. Welcome, it's true. Okay. And so here, here's another, the reason why I always try to call out, um, you know, I call out response from, from the team, from the group right here. The more you acknowledge it, the more you let, you just open it up. Let it be true. Be real. Acknowledge it. Yes. Th that's your mental way of acknowledge letting that in. Okay. So all, all I'm doing is trying to help you learn by saying, yeah. How many of you guys get that? Yep. Got it. Cool. Got it. Open up, learn. That's what we're doing. Okay. So just, just letting you guys know that, right? Because so, we can all, we can all just, you know, read the book. So when I so, hear Eric talk, guys, just like a little commentary here is, I mean, he's like rolling off a lot of these sales bits. So he just kind of rolled off about 25 sales bits in a row. It doesn't happen like that overnight. This guy's been practicing for like a, a decade plus. So going through the process, he hears something he likes, he writes it down. Uh, he records what he does. He's recorded what he does and then listens to uh, what he's been doing. Like there's a whole process of doing the work. Uh, so like the end result of kind of sounding as silky smooth as Eric sounds uh, is the only, there's only one way to get there. And that's through a lot of hard work. It's through a lot of hard work, guys. Well, thank you, Jim. I agree to that. Um, now, what, what uh, the, the, the adjustment that I would say to that is that hard work for sure. Um, but it's not, it's not all hard and it can be fun, but work yeah. nonetheless. Okay. Work nonetheless. Now, what that looks like, and Jim and I were having a, a conversation, well, what does practice look like? Well, how, how do we practice? And, and 
what is it, you know, cause I'm, I'm a huge, huge advocate of practice. Oh my God, practice. Yeah, we have to, okay. One thing, and, and here's a, a, a big aha moment that I went through. And, and this, you guys have may have already crossed this line. If you have awesome, if you haven't, I encourage you to look at this and, and challenge yourself to cross this line, which is that mental barrier between um, what, where do results come from? Just where, where do results come from? How do we achieve the result that we want? Whether it's riding that long wheelie, Jason. Yeah, baby. Okay. Right. We or by getting doing, to that next, taking action. Okay. By or getting to that next level of that sales call or avoiding that price fight or whatever it is, it's all practice. Every time the answer is practice, every single time. Okay. And, and so the reason why I bring up the wheelie or the, the first place trophy or the championship or whatever else is because that's where results, where we celebrate results in a very obvious logical way like it's like okay great man all right you got the championship well you didn't just get that championship that day you earn that championship through the work the games the practice the the heartache da, 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 to get to that spot every single athlete every single top performer in every category will will tell you this story right the instant success no there's nothing instant about success it was a um, all of the work that nobody saw that then turned out to be, oh, instant success, okay? So that's, the practice is where it's at, it always is. And so um, for, for those of us, we believe in that, great. Um, now, the question can be, well, what does practice look like? That's fine, Eric, you say that, and, and I understand on the concept level, but how do I apply that on a weekly date, or how do I make that a part of my life? And so uh, it's a very valid question. And so role-playing, Practicing role playing counts. That counts. As real as you can get is better. When you, if you're vague softball hypothetical, it's better than not practicing, but you're going to get that level of result out of it. So the harder you are, the more realistic you are off the and the next level beyond that is bringing calls, bringing real world scenarios to the table. That's where the real game begins. So every time, um, in every sales environment that I've been in, as far as training goes, and, and I'm talking about trainers um, that, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, been, been personally trained by him, been uh, Blair Singer and, um, and uh, Andy Tanner, and, and these really high level uh, NLP driven sales, uh, every single time, they just echoed the practice again and again and again. In fact, Andy Tanner, I was involved in a very um, intimate sales training group of him. He said, if you're not, if you're not practicing, get out of the room, period. You're, you're not, your time is not worthy to be here if you're not practicing, period. That's just the way it was. And, and that really resonated with me, that punch to the face. And so we, what practice looked like with Andy Tanner was a prep pricking, a pricking, just if I've never listened to you partner up with somebody and it can be not just one or it can be two or three people but you partner up and you trade insults to each other hot potato insults insult throw it to somebody they receive it then they insult right back insult back and forth back and forth without cracking without getting pushed off the, your feet without being like, oh, shit, okay? Without thinking twice. That's called pricking at each other, okay? It can be done on a very vanilla level or it can be done in the most brutal fashion possible. What I witnessed for like the high level sales training, Blair Singer and Robert Kiyosaki, I watched them prick each other. And it was, I would never say that the, they were saying to each other in front of an audience, I would never say that out loud until I saw what that environment, like they were just trying to get under the skin of the other person in any creative way they could, no limit. And it was just to feel that hit and smile and toss it back. And that 
ability to go back and forth, back and forth and not get rattled was incredible practice. So that's what one version of what practice can look like. So just being willing and you can baby step into that, but just toss it, take an insult, toss it back, take it in, toss it back, take it in, toss it back, go, right? That's, that's so exactly. It sounds like you're, so Eric, it sounds like you're talking about building a thicker skin and uh -huh. to be in this industry, you need to be thick skinned to, to deal with the, the craziness and the, and the, what the things they tell you about your mother that you didn't know and the things like that. And, or even if somebody calls you a liar or is about to kick you out the house, you got to be able to bounce back so that you don't lose your, you know, lose your cool. Compose 100%. You, you, you are picking up exactly what I'm putting down. It's thick skin. Having the ability to navigate emotionally, navigate those moments and not be rattled. Okay. That's, that's what practice looks like. Another version of practice is what we did and type down the sales bits, right? Oh, that really resonated. I'm going to write that down. And then I'm going to record my voice saying those, that sales bit. So I, the more I say it and then hear myself saying it, say it, hear myself, the more it just rolls right off. Okay. So that's how that, that shows up. So again, that's what practice looks like. That's what Clint did with this document right here. This is all just his practice. We're just seeing the result of his practice. And now the, what makes this uh, document so powerful for him, as opposed to you, is the fact that he created it. He went through and this is his typing. It's a, his result of practice, showing up, adjusting, liking it, typing it out, practicing it. That's the difference. So I gave you guys the fish here. Right. And so it's only going to be as powerful as you guys pour into it. But this is the example of it. So um, I know I'm, I'm standing real tall in my soapbox right now and I, I get all that. Um, but I just want to share what that looks like and, and just kind of encourage the thought of like, how can how can you collectively we apply some of these principles that I just talked about? Questions, comments, feedback. I'd love to hear it. No, for me, um, the the common I've heard it said the common denominator of success is doing be willing to do what the unsuccessful people are not willing to do, and for me, I think that this is one of those 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 blind spots where um, I know I haven't been doing the role plays and writing down the sales bits. I actually took the time to write down sales bits for my network partner uh, conversations that I that I've been having, and I realized first of all I, I go a lot off the cuff. But as I was writing it down, I'm realizing like some of the things that I'm saying really might not necessarily be in the right order to even be saying it. And so as I'm writing it, I'm trying not to edit it because I'm trying to give it real, but I'm also trying to edit it because I'm like, okay, this is just totally off base. And so writing it down and seeing what I'm saying is, is making me realize that, okay, there's some things that I could do differently. I'm realizing there's parts that, like I should have a question to make sure they understand because I just rambled on a bunch of stuff and now I wanted to add a question, but, but yeah, that's, that's what I, I saw from doing that sales business. And I, I was scared to even share it with Jim. Cause I'm like, yeah, Jim, this is totally terrible, but, <laughs> but that's kind of what I saw. So. Yeah. Don't be afraid to share, dude. That's the work, dude. That's the championship. That's it, dude. Congrats. Heck yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, just doing without actually learning and improving. Like if you do something wrong a thousand times, your thousand and first time is going to be wrong. Like, like it's becoming aware of your actions, becoming aware of what you're doing and optimizing and improving it. Uh, feedback from Eric B or other team members or whatnot. That is the next, that's the next level. That's the, Kai, the Kaizen, the constant improvement. No question about it. I love that, Brian. Thanks for sharing that. That's amazing. It's amazing. And, and, and so, I, and I have gone through this, you know, myself, but I'll tell you, um, one of the most dangerous personalities in this topic are the people that have a natural born talent in this arena. The reason why that's dangerous is because I, just like, just like a talented athlete, I have a track record of resting on my talent as opposed to putting in the work on these topics. Cause I can fly off the cuff. 
just fine. And I could probably outperform the average person. In fact, I know I can right off the cuff, no practice. That's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's like watching, we've all seen the athlete that has way more talent than what they deserve. Why do, they, why do we say deserve? It's because they're not utilizing the talent. They're not putting in any work to take that talent to where it could just be like unreal. Okay. That's the danger. Complacency. Oh yeah. yeah I know, I'm good. I'm good at these conversations. Oh yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Look at me. I'm a salesman. Uh, okay. That's the danger. So this is where you realize like, holy cow, all of it, man. If you've got a sales talent, if you, this is coming fairly natural to, to you, guess what? The next level is just going to, is glorious, right? It's just, you're going to, your talent is just going to shine as you refine it and refine it and refine it. Like that's, that's the Michael Jordan effect, you know, just getting better and better. The Tiger Woods effect, you know, like that's really, that's what I see in those stories of, you know, like the Tiger Woods story is like somebody that's tremendously talented, but then worked at it, then worked at it. Tremendously talented, then worked at it. That's the result. So anyways, that's a principle I truly believe in. I've walked that and I'll tell you, um, I, the part that I was the most resistant to was to listen to my own voice. That was the part that I, I was the most resistant to. And the minute that I, I overcame that personally was when I just went to an, another level you know, uh, and yeah, go. So, Hey, so real quick, those of y'all that have the notability app. Okay. Um, uh, recording's very easy. If it's a phone call, just put your phone on speaker and record in the notability app and it'll record the whole thing. Uh, when you go on appointments, you can record in the notability app, the appointment too. Uh, so I am willing and able and, and Eric B is a resource too, uh, to give you kind of like one-on-one -on -one feedback on like what's happening with these recordings and, and like, like to listen at it with you and kind of give you some, some feedback from an outsider's perspective. Um, so, I mean, that's, I mean, is anybody gonna do, does anybody want to do this as like an action step to start recording their stuff? What do you guys think? Do you guys see the value in it? I saw a couple of hands. So um, who wants to go to the next level? Okay. We're on the right call. That was, that was a qualifier to be here, <laughs> right? Who wants to, okay, good. So, so let's agree upon what activities we're going to do to get to that next level. I think we have a, we don't all need to do the same thing necessarily, but there are some really good ideas right here that we can all kind of commit to. There's really great resources around here. And I want to make it abundantly clear to everybody is that I don't give a shit whether you bomb calls, it's embarrassing, or it's phenomenal. Bring them all to the table. The worst, in fact, the better, okay? Don't allow an ego, a um, I should know better, or any of that stuff to hold you back from this improvement process. That's your own shit. Don't bring it here, okay? Because what we're gonna do here is just gonna get better, and we're gonna laugh about it, we're going to adjust it. We're going to write some things down. We're going to have a good time while we do it. There's no ego, none. I don't judge you. You don't judge me. We don't, it's all about getting better and servicing our clients at, at a higher level. So just, I just want to say that. So everybody's really clear on that. Um, the, the, the ego is what oftentimes holds anybody back. You know, just not saying that applies here in this environment, but just reminder that this is a safe zone. And that uh, the more raw and real we can be about the calls that we're having, the better we're going to get faster. So um, let's let's rock and roll. And and David is the prime example of what little tweaks in your game do. Just two results at the beginning of the call, man. I dude, I, I that. Thank you for sharing from a perspective. The whole group needs to hear that. You needed to hear that evidence procedure. And it's a reminder that these little tweaks, this one follow-up pattern emo striking an emotional difference, emotional change in them created a whole different outcome, a whole nother layer of rapport, a whole nother layer, right? 
it's we are all just right there it's we we are fine tweaks away from that and that's you put two two contracts on the board in a week dude bring that paycheck home right that's what we all want right two per week so um good stuff guys i really appreciate all your time and and knowing that uh that leaning on 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 my calendar you know let's um it, you guys have all access to it so let's do that if you can and um hey i think uh, pouring into the practice environment that you guys have is just really going to serve you it's already is showing up so i, I was going to say um as far as what we're, what we're committed to doing you know this script i've had it in front of me and I, i've had a lot of a lot of good leads off my text messaging campaign i've mentioned that before but uh, I've already started doing this. You can see I've, I've made some changes in it. Just, yeah. you know, say the same things in a little more comfortable way. But I'm I'm doing my best to go through this entire thing on every call. And I'm not quite there yet, but I'm a whole lot more comfortable with it. And things are occurring more naturally to me uh, pretty quickly. So I'm going to continue. That's with a this. win, Chuck, that I'd love for you to bring to the table at the call, the beginning of the calls. That work that you just described is a major win. So thank you and bring that to the call. That's Absolutely. the work that we celebrate. Awesome, dude. For real. Hey, I was also got hey, I hope you found this video helpful. And even more important than just one video is to continue to stay plugged in and practice these success habits. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything we post. Always remember too that you can't just watch the video. You have to implement what you've learned. So I encourage you to take action because this is what practice looks like. Now these videos cover what a seller lead call looks like and to uncover what our winning seller appointments look like, I put together a quick but in-depth 20-minute training on Eric's system that he created to analyze deals with speed and accuracy and to get a property under contract on the spot at the seller appointment with no paperwork. Simply just click the link in the description of this video that says the ultimate seller appointment and when you register with your name and email, we'll also share the top performing smile and dial seller lead scripts. And those are what our clients and we use to qualify and close leads with ease over the phone in today's market. And this free 20 minute training will cover essentially the system that Eric created to bring our business into the digital age. And I'll share exactly what and how to do that so that you can model it as well. Simply click the ultimate seller appointment link down in the description to register and also take advantage of those winning smile and dial seller lead scripts and make every seller appointment the ultimate seller appointment. We'll see you in the training and we'll see you in the next video too.